Section eleven of the Girl with the Golden Eyes. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Giessen. The Girl with the Golden Eyes by Honoré de Balzac. Translated by Ellen Marriage. Section eleven de marsay was driven to the house of paul de manerville for more than a week henri was away from home and no one could discover either what he did during this period nor where he stayed this retreat saved him from the fury of the mulatto and caused the ruin of the charming creature who had placed all her hope in him whom she loved as never human heart had loved on this earth before on the last day of the week about eleven o'clock at night henri drove up in a carriage to the little gate in the garden of the hotel san real four men accompanied him the driver was evidently one of his friends for he stood up on his box like a man who was to listen an attentive sentinel for the least sound one of the other three took his stand outside the gate in the street the second waited in the garden leaning against the wall the last who carried in his hand a bunch of keys accompanied de marsay henri said his companion to him we are betrayed by whom my good ferragus they are not all asleep replied the chief of the devourers it is absolutely certain that some one in the house has neither eaten nor drunk look see that light we have a plan of the house from where does it come i need no plan to know replied ferragus it comes from the room of the marquise ah cried de marsay no doubt she arrived from london to-day the woman has robbed me even of my revenge but if she has anticipated me my good gracien we will give her up to the law listen listen the thing is settled said ferragus to henri the two friends listened intently and heard some feeble cries which might have aroused pity in the breast of a tiger your marquise did not think the sound would escape by the chimney said the chief of the devourers with the laugh of a critic enchanted to detect a fault in a work of merit we alone we know how to provide for every contingency said henri wait for me i want to see what is going on upstairs i want to know how their domestic quarrels are managed by god i believe she is roasting her at a slow fire de marsay lightly scaled the stairs with which he was familiar and recognized the passage leading to the boudoir when he opened the door he experienced the involuntary shudder which the sight of bloodshed gives to the most determined of men the spectacle which was offered to his view was moreover in more than one respect astonishing to him the marquise was a woman she had calculated her vengeance with that perfection of perfidy which distinguishes the weaker animals she had dissimulated her anger in order to assure herself of the crime before she punished it too late my beloved said paquita in her death agony casting her pale eyes upon de marsay 
the girl of the golden eyes expired in a bath of blood the great illumination of candles a delicate perfume which was perceptible a certain disorder in which the eye of a man accustomed to amorous adventures could not but discern the madness which is common to all the passions revealed how cunningly the marquise had interrogated the guilty one the white room where the blood showed so well betrayed a long struggle the prints of paquita's hands were on the cushions here she had clung to her life here she had defended herself here she had been struck long strips of the tapestry had been torn down by her bleeding hands which without a doubt had struggled long paquita must have tried to reach the window her bare feet had left their imprints on the edge of the divan along which she must have run her body mutilated by the dagger thrusts of her executioner told of the fury with which she had disputed a life which henri had made precious to her she lay stretched on the floor and in her death throes had bitten the ankles of madame de san real who still held in her hand her dagger dripping blood the hair of the marquise had been torn out she was covered with bites many of which were bleeding and her torn dress revealed her in a state of semi-nudity with the scratches on her breasts she was sublime so her head eager and maddened exhaled the odour of blood her panting mouth was open and her nostrils were not sufficient for her breath there are certain animals who fall upon their enemy in their rage do it to death and seem in the tranquillity of victory to have forgotten it there are others who prowl around their victim who guard it in fear lest it should be taken away from them and who like the achilles of homer drag their enemy by the feet nine times round the walls of troy the marquise was like that she did not see henri in the first place she was too secure of her solitude to be afraid of witnesses and secondly she was too intoxicated with warm blood too excited with the fray too exalted to take notice of the whole of paris if paris had formed a circle round her a thunderbolt would not have disturbed her she had not even heard paquita's last sigh and believed that the dead girl could still hear her die without confessing she said go down to hell monster of ingratitude belong to no one but the fiend for the blood you gave him you owe me all your own die die suffer a thousand deaths i have been too kind i was only a moment killing you i should have made you experience all the tortures that you have bequeathed to me i i shall live i shall live in misery i have no one left to love but god she gazed at her she is dead she said to herself after a pause in a violent reaction dead oh i shall die of grief the marquise was throwing herself upon the divan stricken with a despair which deprived her of speech 
when this movement brought her in view of henri de marsay who are you she asked rushing at him with her dagger raised henri caught her arm and thus they could contemplate each other face to face a horrible surprise froze the blood in their veins and their limbs quivered like those of frightened horses in effect the two menachmi had not been more alike with one accord they uttered the same phrase lord dudley must have been your father the head of each was drooped in affirmation she was true to the blood said henri pointing to paquita she was as little guilty as it is possible to be replied margarita eufemia porraberil and she threw herself upon the body of paquita giving vent to a cry of despair poor child oh if i could bring thee to life again i was wrong forgive me paquita dead and i live i i am the most unhappy at that moment the horrible face of the mother of paquita appeared you are come to tell me that you never sold her to me to kill cried the marquise i know why you have left your lair i will pay you twice over hold your peace she took a bag of gold from the ebony cabinet and threw it contemptuously at the old woman's feet the chink of the gold was potent enough to excite a smile on the georgian's impassive face i come at the right moment for you my sister said henri the law will ask of you nothing replied the marquise one person alone might ask for a reckoning for the death of this girl cristemio is dead and the mother said henri pointing to the old woman will you not always be in her power she comes from a country where women are not beings but things chattels with which one does as one wills which one buys sells and slays in short which one uses for one's caprices as you here use a piece of furniture besides she has one passion which dominates all the others and which would have stifled her maternal love even if she had loved her daughter a passion what henri asked quickly interrupting his sister play god keep you from it answered the marquise but whom have you said henri looking at the girl of the golden eyes who will help you to remove the traces of this fantasy which the law would not overlook i have her mother replied the marquise designating the georgian to whom she made a sign to remain we shall meet again said henri who was thinking anxiously of his friends and felt that it was time to leave no brother she said we shall not meet again i am going back to spain to enter the convent of los dolores you are too young yet too lovely said henri taking her in his arms and giving her a kiss good-bye she said there is no consolation when you have lost that which has seemed to you the infinite a week later paul de manerville met de marsay in the tuileries on the terrasse des feuillants 
well what has become of our beautiful girl of the golden eyes you rascal she is dead what of consumption paris march eighteen thirty four to april eighteen thirty five end of section eleven recording by martin geeson in hazelmere surrey end of the girl with the golden eyes by honore de balzac translated by ellen marriage